Okay, then we start to get to these guys. So one too many, I'm gonna put it on again. That means a single X value will give you multiple Y values when you put it in, right? So for example, if you get one X too many Y, you can get anything that looks, for example, like, I'm gonna draw a weirdo looking thing like this. Shoop. Okay, now if you turn your head over, just turn your head over. The way I drew this was, this is kind of like a cubic, right? This is a quadratic, this is kind of like a cubic, right? Um, except I've turned it over on its side, right? Now the thing here is, if I pick a single x value, let's get my green again, if I pick a single x value, clearly, like pick one, like here. You see that guy, it's like, which y value does that correspond to? And the answer is, lots of values, right? In this particular case, there's three of them, right? So I've got uh, one up here, there's a second one I've already collided with, and then there's a third one over here, okay? Now, when you get your vertical line and you run this across, right? Uh, let me just extend my graph a teeny bit. Zoop. Remember I mentioned before, the vertical line test is something you've got to pass everywhere on your graph, not just on a few spots, it's got to pass everywhere. So even though I put a vertical line here and you're like, cool, I pass over here, right? As I move across and I have to test the whole thing, you're like, bam! No good, right? The fact that there's too many, even if it's not everywhere, it's just somewhere, right? The fact that it's too many, at least in some places, means with regard to the vertical line test, do we pass? No. Nope, we fail, okay? So, well, this guy does anyway. So with the vertical line test, it doesn't work. And as you can see up here, that disqualifies it for being a function, right? Last one down here, just for the sake of completeness, because I'm really trying to emphasize here, right? What to what is x to y, input to output? Many x's will give you many y's. Can anyone think of the common example shape that we had? Sorry. Yeah, the circle. The circle is the classic example, right? Go ahead, draw a circle for me. Right, so you can go ahead, you can slap your vertical line across that. It dramatically it flails in dramatic fashion, okay? Um, if you pick a single x value, like here, right? it corresponds to multiple y values, like so. But it also works in reverse. Uh, if you pick a single uh, y value, it's also going to correspond to many x's, like that. Okay, so you can see what I was looking at with these vertical and horizontal lines. So it's like I'm just intersecting everywhere, okay? So this guy here, it does not pass the vertical line test, so we no longer call it a function, we call it a? Uh, relation, right? And it is actually important. All of these things here, so I'm going to draw, ask you to draw a really big long curly brace, right? All of these things, they are all called relations. But functions are like a special kind of relation, right? So they're all relations, like so. Um, it's a little bit like squares and rectangles, if you like, right? Um, every rectangle Sorry, let me start that again. Every square is also a rectangle. It's like a special version of a square, right? Um, these guys don't stop being relations any more than a square stops being a rectangle. These are functions, but these guys are not, so they are only relations, okay? Now, uh, just on the board, here's a couple more things I want to point out before we leave off, just so we've got our review all in one spot. This is talking about the ver vertical line test. Um, I know that some of you will have encountered a thing called the horizontal line test. Some of you will have not. Um, I'm deliberately not talking about that right now because the horizontal line test is kind of irrelevant to what we're focusing on at the moment. It has to do with this thing called inverses, which we're going to worry about later. It's its whole own thing. So that is why it's a conspicuous absence from here. Um, I remember when I was learning this the first time, and it's really easy to confuse these two if you learn them simultaneously, and there's no, uh, you know, pressing need to use the horizontal line test, you're not going to get anything useful out of it. Whereas right now, the vertical line test is telling you whether this thing is a function or not, and that's something we really do want to know. Okay. One other thing, and um, this is something that Mrs. Lee is going to get onto a little bit later. See this um, very first one, the one-to-one, -one, right? I happened to draw a graph that started low, and it went high, and it just sort of does that all the way. It's really important that it like, never turns back around, because if it did turn around, don't draw this, but if it did turn around, why would it not be one-to-one? -one? What would it be instead? If it turned around at some point, which one of these would it be? Yeah, Sean? It would be many-to-one, and the y value would um, hit the action again. Exactly right. Um, if it turned around at some point, any point, it would become many-to-one because there are several, good morning, several x values, like uh, these two, 
which correspond to a single y value. So it's no longer one to one. Before I come to your question, Rasmus, I just want to make this quick point. What that means is, to be one to one, you've either got to keep on going up all the way and never turn around, or alternatively, and actually this is worth um, drawing on if you've got a different color, just so you don't confuse things. This is going up all the way without ever turning. You could also have something that's like going down without ever, sorry, that's a bad spot there, without ever turning. Do you see that's also one to one? Like with any x value, you can only find one y value for it. So we give this guy a special kind of name, right? We call it monotonic. Which is exactly what it sounds like, right? When you hear someone and they're speaking in monotone and they never have any up or down bits in their voice because it never goes and changes, it's always monotone, it's always the same, right? So this is always going up, always going up, never turning around, or always going down, it's monotonic like a person with no tone in the voice, okay? Or no changes in their tone, I should say. Uh, if it's going up, and this is very original, right? We call it monotonically increasing because that's what it's doing, it's going up. And if it's going down, it's monotonically, what do you think? Not increasing, decreasing, right? So like I said, maybe you want to write them here, but we're going to um, address this a little bit later on. So it's monotonically increasing, or it's monotonically decreasing. Rastin, you had a question before, or did you? Okay. What's your, so it was, <laughs> it's like that was what we were talking, okay, good. 